fighters. First, let's go to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Trump Castle Hotel and Casino by the Bay in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Tonight, Top Rank Incorporated and the King of Beers, Budweiser, who bring the world the war on Monday, June 12th between Leonard and Hearns. Tonight, present professional boxing on ESPN for your entertainment. These bouts are sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Deputy Commissioner Lawrence Wallace, and the Chairman is Jerry Gormley. The scoring will be done by three judges, Al DeVito, John Stewart, and Milo Savage, Chief Physician at Ringside, Dr. Frank B. Doggett, Attending physicians, Dr. Paul Williams and Dr. Charles Wilson. The alternating referees will be Ted Pick and Frank Cappuccino with the alternate counting for the knockdown seconds and the timekeeper is Arthur Spell. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get things started with four rounds in the heavyweight division. The referee for this first bout is Ted Pick. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the white trunks with black and red trim and weighs an even 217 pounds. From right here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, undefeated as a professional with a record of 3-0, and oh, all by knockout victory, ladies and gentlemen, Bruce, the Atlantic City Express Zelda. <laughs> and his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with white trim. He weighs 232 and 3 quarter pounds. He's from Welch, West Virginia, as a professional, 6-3. Four of those six victories by knockout. Introducing Jesse, the Tank McGee. Okay, I gave you the instructions. Have any questions for me? All right, I got one pet peeve. When I tell you to break, I want you to break. Is that understood? Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. All right, we've got McGee, who has a record of six and three. His last fight, he was beaten by Ray Mercer. He's called the Tank. I think it becomes evident why Bruce Selden is 6'1", weighs 217. McGee has got 232 and three-quarter pounds packed on a 5'7 frame. Selden in the white trunks and McGee in the black. Selden is the second uh, heavyweight prospect, if you will. Oh, that oh, McGee's that... facing right away, and he's hurt immediately. Thunderous right hand. Uh, Drove McGee back into his corner. Another one hits him high on the forehead and hurts. Well, McGee faced Ray Mercer, the Olympic champion, his last time out. And got knocked out in three. Bruce Selden's probably thinking to himself, I'd like to make some comparisons here. Well, He's... McGee seems wide open for a right hand, out, And Selden has really nailed him with some devastating right, shots. Just... McGee's a little hurt. Yeah, he is. Jesse told us earlier today, he's got to get inside, which, of course, is obvious. Said I wasn't aggressive against Mercer, and in fact, Jesse's lost his last couple of fights. He said I've been standing on the outside, waiting with guys, and that's what happened to him here with Selden. Well, he's going to have to have a good left hand, being as short as he is, to work his way inside. He's got four knockouts, six and three for a record. Took some thunderous blows from Selden here to start this fight. Things have suddenly slowed and quieted. So it kind of just backed off. He might have said to himself, what do I have to hit this guy with? Ted Pick, the official, or a ring post or something? <laughs> he really nailed McGee. McGee with his head down is going to be fair game for another series of thunderous right hands if he isn't careful. Felt it another one. Pick the official steps between these two big men. Oh, right hand high on the forehead of McGee thrown by Selden. Well, Jesse McGee, McGee wide open right now. This 21-year-old is throwing real wide looping punches and uh, leaving himself open. And Selden has hit him with some thunderous shots, as you said. Pumps a left to the body. McGee, a wild left hand. Right, step back, step back, step back. Selden has knocked out everybody he's fought. Three guys, three knockouts. McGee, 25% in the knockout department. Oh, Selden switches to the southpaw stance all of a sudden. Now he's back to orthodox. 
This trainer, uh, Carmen Graziano, very high in the prospects for Brussel, but he really feels he's a heavyweight that could make some noise. He's had a very big opening round here against McGee. I don't know where that would put him in the heavyweight scheme of things, but we'll be back to see how round two goes. It's scheduled for four. McGee continues to take some punishment on the ropes. We'll be back right after this. Hello, I'm Dan Grubb. If you've been holding off buying a new car or truck, waiting for the right into live action. Round number two, it's scheduled for four. These men are obviously heavyweights. The Tank, that's Jesse McGee. 232 and three quarter pounds, though he's only 5'7". Bruce Selden at 6'1 and 217 in the white trunks. And a less covered guy would have gone down and justifiably so in that opening round. McGee took some thunderous punches. Yeah, and I saw Jesse McGee take the same kind of shots against Mercer, who was a very big puncher, of course. Our fans in his can have seen him. He's getting in some licks of his own now here in round two, Al. He was working to the body good against Selden. Hit him a pretty good shot to the face a moment ago. Starting to get the left hook in a little bit. And there you see the, the big edge for Selden. If he landed only 10 of uh, 40 punches. Ted Peck is the referee in case you've just joined us. We're in round two. You know, view from Trump Castle in Atlantic City. Big left took by McGee. A subtle change here. You, it's almost impossible to see because it, 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 it's so short on the inside. He's landing his jab, McGee. He's landing a solid jab on the inside there. This, this is wild. McGee covering up and Selden has him in McGee's corner. Trying to level. Not very artistic, Tom, but it is... It is a fight. Exciting. It? It's a fight. And with that last shot, they were almost in your lap. <laughs> we put you right there where the action is. Selden is in the uh, white trunks. McGee in the black. And the man's been down, though McGee had every right to hit the deck in round number one. They've thrown a lot of punches, these two big guys. And for a moment now, they... You see him a bit spent as they lean against each other. Yes. With a, just under a minute to go in round number two. Welt under the left eye of McGee, bothering him a bit. Nobody wants to throw right here. As you said, they are they're tired. Well, they've thrown a lot of punches. They've expended a lot of energy. All been covering up quite well. Popped in a little uppercut a moment ago. McGee comes back with one of his own. Nice move work by Selden. Steps away and banks to the body. Comes back with the left hook. McGee, though, pressing on right up. His face buried in the chest of Selden. Trying to find some punching room inside to hurt the big guy, the taller guy. Selden's, uh, McGee's punches out, as you pointed out earlier, are really taking the circuitous route. They're coming by... Uh, it's overland, really, instead yeah. of direct mail. No question about it. There's <laughs> the bell, and that ends round number two. To go back to the corner with Selden. Well, he's got uh, great size, and he's got a body. Looks like somebody chiseled it out of a, a granite wall. 6'1", 217. I guarantee you he'll get frustrated and you'll knock it off. Stay with the jab. Good snapping jab. It's that left hand that we thought may have hurt Bruce Selden, but it really didn't land uh, that squarely. Did push him back, though. Here we go with round number three, scheduled for four between these two heavyweights. They come out and touch gloves. That's Bruce Selden, the taller of the two men. With his back to you, he's in the white trunks. Jesse McGee. And uh, this just in from Bob Canobio and uh, Logan Hobson of our punch profile. 51% of Selden's jabs are landing in this bout. That's a real nice percentage for Bruce Selden. He sticks out a jab there, and McGee whistles a left hook right back at him. Oh, good right hand as Selden 
caught McGee leading the other way and popped him with the right hand as he moved away. Now he swings to the southpaw stance. Al Bernstein's scorecard. Sheldon has won both rounds on his card. Even though, yeah, even though McGee did better in that second round, much better. I thought Sheldon still landed uh, more sharp punches. most recent fighter we've seen Al at about this size but with I would say with considerably more skills uh, Orlin Norris of course the heavyweight well yeah Orlin Norris you mean as far as short yes. heavyweights yeah. yeah saw him against Greg Page and he that's a good right hand by McGee Orlin that uh, makes his size work for him big uppercut well, I, I, Belden, boy, I tell you they aren't holding a thing back either one of them McGee is just a wild brawler. There he just falls down, but he is a tough guy. No knockdown. He just fell. Some, I'm sure from exhaustion. Other just that Belden stepped away from him. McGee was leaning against him. Well, Jesse's used to uh, abuse. He's a little league umpire back home. Verbal, that kind of thing. <laughs> I dare say nobody knowing what he does when he's not behind the plate would ever really choose him. That's true. Because uh, Jesse McGee is one tough customer. Sheldon uh, has had his way with them for the most part here, though McGee has landed an occasional shot. Sheldon really has uh, landed the more thunderous punches. Jesse does not really get uh, his body into the left hooks and throws. They're all arm punches. Chris Sheldon uses a very good uppercut. It's a punch that works well. There it is. There's the uppercut. A series of punches. McGee taking all of them. Hard to miss. He's right at the right in front of Sheldon. Sheldon's biggest problem is getting room to punch as McGee leans into him. Nice job of using the uppercut. Mercer used it against McGee. And Jesse's really battered now. Pick the referee taking a long look at McGee, who seems to be floundering more than ever now as round three comes to a close. We'll be back. Before a little audit there in round three. And uh, between rounds, why the subject was uh, McGee's well-being and was he able to continue? And his corner convinced the uh, New Jersey State officials who were right on top of the corner questioning him at length whether or not he was fit to continue. Referee Ted Pickett come over and now Belden popping away at him and Belden building him almost without uh, return puts McGee in a position of uh, maybe having this thing stop. Jesse is not about to give up without building somebody in return though. Bruce Seldon is tired. He he tired himself with that exchange. And if, that, if Jesse McGee had a little more to offer here, he could, he could get after Bruce Seldon. But Seldon has really, he may have taken a lot out of himself, Al, but he has taken an awful lot out of McGee. And oh, he really yeah. Punished him. Well, he really has. And uh, But Bruce Seldon, one thing he's going to have to work on is uh, I think it's his stamina because you can tell he's a little bit fatigued here. This is round four, fourth and final round of this heavyweight bout. Selden, the taller of the two men, white trunks trimmed in red. One thing Bruce Selden, well, there's a couple things he's shown us in this bout. One, a good jab, very good uppercut, and uh, has gone downstairs to the body pretty well also. McGee, a weld under his left eye. He's been... Uh, hammered from one side of the ring to the other. I thought in the closing moments of round three, the referee was very, very close to stopping the bout. A lot of conversation in the corner. Before they got round four underway. Round four is just a bit slow in pace. Zeldin taking some shots now, and returning a few, but McGee continues to crowd him into the ropes. Sheldon, the taller of the two men, but I don't know if that's always an advantage, Al, to fight a shorter fighter. I don't, I'm sure it has its good points, but hopping right hand by Sheldon and McGee and then the uppercut. That uppercut is the key for Sheldon. If he's going to get Jesse Lo McGee out of there, it's going to be with the uppercut. Working to the body, a chopping, clubbing right hand all thrown by Sheldon. Nothing in return from McGee. There's a weak effort, a pawing right hand, and Ted Pick is very close to stopping this fight, I'm sure. He's looking in very closely, and boy, he is really looking McGee over. 
McGee gets a left hand right flush in the face. A lot of swelling under both eyes now, Jesse McGee is re uppercut again, Al. Final seconds of this bout, but the, you, as you pointed out, they, they may look to stop it anyway. McGee not offering much in the way of a challenge for Selden here. Takes a half a dozen punches, throws one, and Selden pretty tired himself. There's the bell. Well, if you're going to talk about tough guys, you got to talk about Jesse McGee. He is, he is some tough customer. He is indeed, and if Bruce Selden was looking for comparisons, uh, let's say with Ray Mercer, uh, he was not able to take McGee out of there as Mercer did in the third round. Certainly battered Jesse. And this young man from West Virginia, uh, you know, is in over his head against some of these young uh, heavyweight prospects. The left eye will be closed by the time he gets to the shower. Swelling underneath it has all but closed it now. Bruce Selden would like very much to believe that at 22 he's a heavyweight of the future. He may well be. He's got to work a little bit on that stamina. And, uh, but he shows, and you can see Carmen Graziano has worked with him hard on a lot of the different skills. He's got a good jab, a good uppercut time. Works the body pretty well. And uh, so, you know, he's not unskilled. And a magnificent physique, if that oh, has anything in the way of good stead as far as winning a title or becoming one of the top heavyweights in the world. He certainly is built for He's chiseled in that. He is. So, uh, Michael Buffer's collecting the cards of the ringside judges. Take a look at how many punches were thrown. You can see just... Good, a good accuracy level for Selden. All right, Michael Buffer has the official's cards. Let's go to him. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the official scoring. Milo Savage has about 40 to 35. John Stewart, 39-37. And Al DeVito scores it, 39-36. For the winner, still undefeated, Bruce. The Atlantic City Express Selden. So a unanimous win for Bruce Selden as you...